stocks lined up. And it was a simple equation for investors today. You had some decent Chinese data, you had some good bank earnings at home, and the market was really just off to the races. The Dow up 200 points. So, Tim, when we put the aggregate together of all the information we, we gained today and over the course of the week, have we taken global recession off the table? I, I don't know if we've done that. Certainly China's data was less than people had expected in the doomsday scenario of last week. They cut rates. People thought that possibly this meant they had something up their sleeve much worse than they gave us a slew of data this week. A couple of things that concern me. One, electricity production in China is, is down significantly year over year. That means steel prices, iron ore, coke and coal, a lot of that part of the, the commodity complex I don't think recovers anytime soon. But what's interesting about the Chinese data is that relative to expectations, China is now for the first time this year tracking better than the United States is relative to expectations. And I think that's really the story of this week and today. People think the Central Bank of China, the People's Republic Bank of China, is going to come to the market with more aggressive stimulus. Right. And that gives riskier assets a lot of room to run. Amazing. Maybe the data today was good enough to facilitate a soft landing in China, but bad enough to keep the PBOC in play. Ron, let me get to you. If the markets have been rallying part on these Chinese stimulus hopes, where exactly is that money going and what's the trade? Yeah, the trade is very, I think, simple. You've got to really anticipate where's the government going to put their money. They're not putting their money in Baidu or Internet stocks. Where I think they're putting their money is to support the local economy and the people of China. So I like healthcare. I like a stock, LFC. It's a healthcare company, well-priced. I like CEO, CNOC, which is the Chinese oil company. I think they're going to try to stimulate these two areas to try to bring the economy back. And I think the news that came out today was actually very good. I think it's going to pump the, right. pump the gas on. Real quick, though because people want to see China as a consumption story. The good news is that China GDP, consumption to GDP is about 43%, whereas a couple of years ago it was about 30%. In other words, people want to believe they are truly stimulating. Do you believe this is actually happening? I do. I think that China is in retrenchment mode. They're trying to move away from being an export-oriented economy to becoming a domestic economy. We saw a lot of hurdles and a lot of issues this year because of that transition, but you can see Chinese, the Chinese government really moving in that direction. Rich, you're our chart guy, so let's bring up the charts. Was the rally today here in the States echoed in some of the other markets, particularly the emerging markets? Uh, certainly, that, that was echoed, not just here in the States, not just today, but over the past few weeks. Clearly, China has been the straw that stirs that global macro cocktail. We feel the fears of a <laughs> slowdown in China have largely run their course through those risky assets that Tim alluded to. We feel that they have been strengthening over the past few weeks and the past few sessions. We're talking about crude oil firming, copper firming, emerging markets well off their bottoms. That's a signal that the trend has turned and you want to be a buyer of those emerging markets. Would you agree that what we, what we saw today was more than just a trade? It's something that really we can sort of bite into for, say, the next 6, 12 months, Tim? Well, I'll take both sides of this because I think Rich is correct that the expectations out there and the technically markets were very oversold in a lot of these risk assets. I don't think that the world was that bad to begin with. In fact, I think people are typically way off sides on China. They're either too bullish or too bearish. What I think is interesting about what you're saying, Rich, is that you believe actually that the euro, for example, can rally to 130, which will be a signal at least to other riskier assets that things are okay in Europe. But you see that the dollar index, the DXY, is still going to keep in its upward trend, which is somewhat contradictory because to me, that means the commodity prices and commodities and stocks related to have to trade lower if the dollar stays strong. Good point. One thing is clear though, folks, I think we can, uh, we can bottom line it by saying China is slowing down, albeit from a very high base. So the question now for investors, what will that slowdown mean for earnings for U.S. companies that report next week? We've got a slew of earnings. What, about 20% of the S&P is right. going to come out with their earnings next week? And at this stage, the kind of guidance that we're getting is, you know, overseas problems are weighing on our earnings and currency headwinds are weighing on our earnings. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this week we had Burberry's, first of all, the luxury segment, which people have, have, have felt needs to be supported by China and the rest of the emerging markets folks, and, and, and clearly has been, had terrible earnings. Cummins, which is industrial engines and diesel, was a place where people, it's a fantastic company, got destroyed. Now, I think a lot of this is overdone. Manny, one of the things I think we're yeah. going to get next week is a continued tale of FX headwinds. Right. But, you know, names like Philip Morris PM, which is an interesting name because it's very defensive. Names like Yum, names like some of the other places that I think people have been very defensive 
live in this global multinational growth fear, uh, our names are actually going to surprise on the upside. Rich, Tim, which, yeah. Which, yeah, so you wanted to jump in. Yeah, yeah I wanted in. to jump in here. I think Tim, Tim makes a fair point about the currencies, but we actually think that the currency translation is going to turn from a significant headwind to a significant tailwind. We think that these multinationals here in the U.S. are going to benefit from a weaker dollar. When investors start to flee the safe haven or the perceived safe haven of the dollar and they move into that riskier euro. Wait, when are they going to do that? Give us a time frame on that because at the moment the dollar seems to be king. Right at the moment but we have seen critical bottoms in these EM and commodity currencies which have been battered. Of course we know about the battering that's gone on in the euro. We think the trend has turned right here. We're a buyer of the euro at 122 and change. We see upside in the I, short term I, to 130. Know, you know, I think that you've also got to look at stocks that are somewhat insulated from currency. Uh, American stocks uh, selling to the emerging markets and international <laughs> markets. Stocks like Coke and J&J. &J. These are premium products. The emerging consumer is somewhat hooked on some of these products. And, you know, you're going to see good earnings out of these companies next week. Indeed. We're watching lots and lots, including, including uh, we've got Google, Yum Brand, Johnson & Johnson, Intel, Qualcomm, many names coming up. But there is one name that is sure to be a really good tell on the state of the Chinese economy. And that is Yum Brands. It's a fast food giant. It's a fast growing fast food giant. And it reports next Wednesday. We actually had the company CEO Dave Novak on Trade in the Globe just recently. And let's have a listen to what he had to say about China. China is, uh, we, we see growing at least 15% a year. Our, our Yum Restaurant International business 10 and the U.S. business 5. So obviously China is going to lead the way as, as we go forward. Okay, we've just heard the man. Tim, you've just heard the man as well. You interviewed the man. The man is the man. Are, um, you, are you worried about Yum next week? Actually, I think people were worried about Yum last week. Uh, actually, excuse me, last month when the stock went from about 74 down to the low 60s. And, and it, it, the problem here with Yum is at 21 times earnings, it's not a terribly cheap company. And so the pullback to me gives you a place where really this is what we call GARP. This is growth at a reasonable price. This is mm -hmm. a company to me that is growing their earnings. China, as he mentions, 10% return on investment is about 15 percent. This is a fantastic company and I think the market punished it in advance of these numbers. I think it'll be a surprise. Ron, I know you're not a huge fan of Yum, but is that, is that largely just a function of price? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm concerned with valuation. I think that, you know, he said uh, U.S. market growing at five. I think, you know, I'm not so sure about that five percent number there. Uh, it is a little expensive and it's all China. It's not India. It's not the other regions. It's really almost all China. They do have presence in other countries. I like a company like Domino's Pizza. I think they've got a great in, uh, you know, inward focus going to, to, to India and other markets in Asia as well. Okay, Rich, I understand that you think this pullback is actually an outstanding buying opportunity, so you beg to differ with Ron. That, that's exactly it. Look, Mandy, the problem with the strategy of waiting for a pullback in high, high conviction names like this is that when you get that pullback, you don't trade the pullback. You don't want it because things look so ugly. The reality <laughs> is with the stock down 18% from an all-time high... It's still expensive. 18% down, it's still expensive. You know, I think, you know, the U.S. is a real bad overhang for the company. I'm concerned with that. Well, what's interesting to me is that Rich is pretty bullish about the at least the environment for riskier assets. Yeah. I think Yum has been a very defensive trade for people that have wanted to get that growth but didn't want to stray into cyclicals. So we'll see. Uh, I believe him, though. I, when I look at Nike, uh, again, another name that was punished a couple weeks ago, Mandy, this is a place where I think you have an opportunity to buy these. Okay, well, moving on, whether you do your food shopping here.